I don't know. Well, every week Here you, you start off with, we're professionals. We are professionals. <laughs> so. You know, achieving dreams, <laughs> we're professionals, look at the background. <laughs> these are yeah. these are mainstays, right? Uh <laughs> All right. If if this if the way I start this, if the way I start this, right. If you want to cut it out, just let me know. But you've you've accomplished many things in life. There's one thing you'll never accomplish. That's being a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love that. Today on the Teen <laughs> Podcast, we have Chrissy. Chrissy, what's going on? How are you? I am great. I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. One thing that all three of us in this misogynistic toxic <laughs> masculinity podcast never talked about is having kids and you yeah. recently had some kids or one kid don't scare her <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> she's like there's another one <laughs> um so i think one of the things we would like to sort of talk about today is balancing some with you elite level training while going through pregnancy and you know even afterwards like how are you coming back and sort of what's what's on the mind now coming from a very very intense training background to oh now I need to adjust everything yeah wow that's a it's a loaded question um because now Oliver just turned two um so life looks a lot different now than it did you know when he was first born um but I think one of the biggest life changes happened so early when I first got pregnant and how you feel instantly changes. And I, I think I needed to manage expectations so early on um, because fitness immediately changed for me. Uh, my body felt like crap. I felt sick all the time. Uh, and I was, I quickly learned that, wow, I'm, I'm in for a, a whole new life. Um, and that was before anyone even knew I was pregnant. So I, that was a struggle to kind of go from like seeing on social media, everyone saying, oh, you're fit. Pregnancy is going to be easy. Giving birth is going to be easy. That was a lie. <laughs> so, um, but granted I did after the early stages of pregnancy, I did have a pretty easy pregnancy. I think Ryan and I kept the training up, uh, you know, until the day I got, I gave birth. I think my training went really well. Um, and then going from there to the road to nationals a year and a half after, uh, that was a roller coaster. <laughs> I think we first competed in St. Louis 10 months after giving birth. And early on, I had no expectations for how that was going to go. Um, I wanted to just compete. I think it's still on your board at Gleason's, mm-hmm. Chrissy's goals. Probably. Compete before Oliver turns one. Like that was the goal. Um, squat 300 pounds. Because I really had no idea what my body would be able to do. And I didn't want to set myself up for disappointment. Um, and then I think two or three weeks before that competition, I texted Ryan and I said, do you think we could maybe qualify for nationals? And you were like, yes. And (laughs) that changed the goal and changed like my mentality. I was like, wait, I can get back into this. I can be strong again. And so when I competed um, 10 months after having him, it came to that last deadlift and I needed to make it in order to hit that qualifying total for nationals. And that was, that was it. That deadlift kind of like changed my mindset going forward um sorry that was a loaded answer for you but (laughs) no but i think like you said that that's i mean i try to word things a little bit differently than i used to because like you said like i would i've coached i don't know like nine women through their pregnancy and after pregnancy now and every single one of them is different and like i think i'd like to say i think that like training has helped everyone where they had an easier pregnancy or an easier delivery but easy is not the right word it's not none of them none of them are like oh that was easy yeah but I think like I mean many of, of like I said there's probably eight or nine I have to check but like many of you I mean like you squatted a max now max is a relative term at that point like a day out 
right? Yeah. You were like a day or two out. Yeah. And like, and then, and, and like Kristen pull, like Kristen squat again, a max is a relative term. Cause I think like, like, I think both of you squatted like 75% of what you were, had ever done and you were both probably high as shit. But like, I mean, you think like you were still moving lots of weight and you were still training and you were literally going to give birth like two days later. Uh, yeah. So I think that's a big one. And I know that, and that doesn't work for everybody. Um, but I think that was a big thing for a lot of the women that have coached. And, the, and then most of you got back to it pretty quick too. Um, mm. But like you said, I think the expectations are so big because like, yeah, you, you know, you're, it, it might take a while. Like, and you yeah. don't know. I mean, like, like, I mean, like you said, he's almost two now and you're, I mean, you're hitting deadlift, like all time deadlift PR. So your deadlift is up, mm -hmm. your squat is getting there, but it's not your all time PR yet. And your bench is not there yet either. So like, no. I think a lot of people are like, it's been two years, like, yeah, get your shit together. And it's like, well, you know, you got ripped apart. So maybe, maybe you're allowed to have some time. Um, yes. And everyone's different. Cause I said like, like some, uh, a couple of people, their bench came like, raging back and i was like wow that like and then but most of the women the bench was like actually one of the last ones which i was sort of surprised by um mm -hmm. most of you seem to be like really bouncing back to squat and deadlift faster which is i thought that was going to be the hardest just because of like all the core and everything and i thought that would be the hardest and most of you seem to respond to squat and deadlift much better than bench press mm -hmm. And like, I kind of try to take that and like, you know, the next time I coach someone, it's like, okay, well, I've got another pregnant person. Like we, you know, we, we just, we talked about before we started, we just had someone that uh, had a baby a few weeks ago. Uh, we have another one that hasn't announced yet. So I won't say who, but there's another pregnant person that I'm coaching now. Um, and I try to take those things from each person in, but like, they're, they're all so fucking different that I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like we just kind of play it by ear and it's like, Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think early on, like I had been in a message group with a couple of other um, Gleason ladies who either had babies or were pregnant. Um, and then I got a lot of recommendations to, oh, follow Meg squads, <laughs> follow Megan Scanlon. They had babies. And I'm like, it's really hard because you kind of fall into a trap of, comparing yourself and like I said you know everyone is so different and my pregnancy had some minor complications that made me stop training with a barbell for 10 weeks and then it 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 makes your mindset just you know like oh my gosh am I never going to get strong again and I don't know it's just it's tricky to to compare and and then the anxiety portion that people don't talk about like I was so anxious training every day. I mean, I was checking to make sure nothing was going on down there, like all the time. Um, and that's something no one talks about on social media either. It's just the actual anxiety of, or am I harming my baby doing this? Um, even though like logically, you know, lifting is good for me, this and that, it's still kind of scary, but. And yeah, and like, and I'm sure I said this to you two years ago. It's like, I think, I think of it as like, you know, thousands of years ago, you were probably pregnant and hunting a saber tooth tiger. So like, you can do a lot more than <laughs> yeah. you think, but yeah. at the same time, like you see some stuff online and you're like, look at what a pregnant woman can do. She's 39 weeks and she's snatching. And I'm like, ah, yeah. maybe not the smartest thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I was talking to one of the coaches about this, like with just in, and basically the idea is like, how can we make every exercise safer? Like, I don't know if you if you even remember how much of that time, cause like, I know a lot, of, a lot of women kind of block out a lot of that time too, because otherwise you'd never have another baby. Um, <laughs> but like, there's a lot of exercises that we just stopped doing because not that they're inherently not safe. They're like, most of the stuff we're doing is very safe, mm -hmm. but it's those things that like, if you're a little bit off balance, cause your balance changes so much, you're, you know, you're yeah. like, so like, let's do less single leg stuff where you're literally on one leg at a time, because I don't want you to fall or let's mm. do less stuff where your belly's facing the ground, where if you slip and your belly smashes into the floor, like that's, I'm like, I'm thinking of all these things of like, how can we adjust these things to make it like almost like obnoxiously safe? Like, so like to the point where it's like, is this even worth doing? Because it's, 
so much easier. But on the other hand, it's like, well, you kind of have to. And yeah. like thinking of like Cookie right now, like, you know, I was I was giving her some exercises where she finally got to the point and she's like, I can't keep getting up and down off the ground because just it, that was hard. And I told her, I said, mm-hmm. I know this is going to happen. You just need to tell me when. And it got to a point where she's like, I can't go to the floor, stand back up three or four times in a row. Like, it just isn't happening. So then we yeah. like, like did everything like just in a standing position and like, and movements get a little bit weird, but like, you know, you kind of adjust and make it work. But like I said, yeah, you had that 10 weeks, like pretty much pretty early. Yeah. And then you were able to get back to it. Yeah. Um, so that was a big change too. Cause it's not like, usually you, you do less as it goes on and you took this break right in the middle and then we went back to it mm-hmm. and we kind of, and we pushed pretty hard when you got back. And I think and that's not true. At, the fir- at first I was like, let's do the bar. <laughs> yes. Like, cool. Yes. And then we started pushing pretty hard. I think pregnancy was an interesting time for me too, in learning how to trust my own body instead of like, I have full trust in you. Don't get me wrong. But pre-pregnancy, I was like, you know, PR or ER, like I am going to follow this program, whether it hurts, you know, whether I cannot walk home after this. Like, I'm just going to do what I need to do to get where I want to be at this meet. And then during pregnancy, that really had to change to like, okay, you have to listen to your body because Ryan doesn't know how this movement feels. The, I'm the only one that knows. And some of the things that you feel, like I couldn't even articulate to you, but like benching, for example, I know a lot of women don't feel comfortable benching on their back. I felt great doing that. But when my feet were on the floor, I felt like such a strange stretch in my abdominals that I was like, no, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I would bench with my feet up and it was just something like, I couldn't explain why it made me anxious. It just did. And so it, that's what I changed. So just like little things like that and and trusting yourself and trusting how your body feels. I feel like that made me a better athlete today yeah and like I said like every, like again everyone's so different like I usually with, with the pregnant women I'm usually like for bench press like at some point you're gonna have to incline like it's just mm-hmm. gonna happen where you're like you lay down and you're like oh man this is uncomfortable but like not everyone there's mm-hmm. a few people that made it all the way through um some earlier than others were like okay I gotta, I gotta incline at 28 weeks I was like oh okay others were like okay I'm at like 35 weeks I'm gonna incline um and like, but it's, you're right. It's so much up to you at that point. Cause like, I don't, I don't know. And like you said, the anxiety is a, it's a good thing because you're going to feel and think everything so differently mm-hmm. because it's such a huge fucking change from what it was before that, that you're like, that's a new feeling. What's that about? What, you know, and, and now like, yeah. And, and like, well, like you said, maybe you can tell me, but maybe it's like, I, you just have to, it's better that you just make a change on the fly. Like deadlifts, mm-hmm. I tell all the women, like at some point, you're probably going to have to elevate the bar because at some point you just can't get to the bar anymore. You try to bend down for it and you're like, man, that is a long way away. <laughs> and you're like, I'm not going to get to it. And it's like, elevate it when you're ready. Yeah. You know? And some people was like 18 weeks and they're like, I got to go to a block. Mm-hmm. Um, and other people, it's like 35 weeks and they're like, I'm just going to add a block now. I'm like, okay, it's like. But it's, you know, I, we have ideas, but like, it's so individualized. Like, cause I talk all the time, like power things, not super individual. Any coach, it's like, oh, it's super, you're, they're a liar. You're doing three movements. They're the same movements. They're all yeah. the same people. Like you're doing slightly different things. Cause like your hands are in a different spot, but for pregnancy, holy shit, like way different. Um, yeah. And like I said, like I had, so now that I've coached like several, at least I have ideas, but like, they're all if I went back and looked at the programming for all of them, they're not that similar after probably like 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I have ideas, but after that, like it starts to change pretty quick. You know, the first 12, we can maybe get through as long as you feel okay, because you're not really, you're not showing much. You're not that big, but like once you start showing things get weird. (laughs) And I bet it changes second pregnancy on. I, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, I mean, like, I was just talking to Kristen uh, two days ago, because Kristen's, um, like, five months um, with number two right now, and mm-hmm. she said, like, it's a way different feel so far, um, like, 
the first one, there was a, she had to make a lot more modifications. Right now, she's like, I don't know, I feel pretty good. So I'm like, cool, keep going as far as you can, and then you know, see what happens. But like, but again, it also like comes down to like, when do you have to be smart? Because like, I I don't know if you remember that video like five years ago it was like like that CrossFit girl that was snatching like full belly hitting snatches yeah. at like three days out, and I'm like, it, that's my thing of like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like, yes. And I think we just saw this happen again um, with a very famous CrossFitter who won a couple times. She was super pregnant doing all the movements. And I'm not saying whether it's safe or not, but I, I think people need to realize that even the best athletes don't always have the best experts working for them in terms of pregnancy and, and things like that. Um, so we can't like look to them as what is okay to do with our bodies. You know what I mean? Right. I, I don't know. There's no, I, I mean, what's... information what's... too, like there's not, I mean, that's, I think one of the reasons we kind of um, set up that, that group chat with you guys together, all being in the same boat is like, you know, I relied a lot on Ryan's expertise on, on his, you know, what he's learned in the past. There's, I mean, I just pulled it like girls gone strong is like, the number one like place where I would find information for and like beyond that there's not a lot and that's like me knowing and asking questions like and that's you guys being powerlifters and like people that are in the gym like I have to convince a lot of like personal training uh people to like you should train through pregnancy and that's a huge problem when the doctor's telling them not to lift 10 pounds and I'm telling them they should just keep going so it's like yeah a big that thing. That's an interesting thing too. I think, you know, for anyone listening that doesn't know, I moved to Arkansas when I was almost six months pregnant. So I had to leave my family, Everything. friends, teammates, uh, and importantly, my doctors behind to come to Arkansas, um, which is, you know, ranked 49th in healthcare. <laughs> so that was Our fun. Kansas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there was a little anxiety around that. But um, when we finally found a new doctor, the first day we had, you know, like an hour long sit down and they said, okay, so no lifting more than 25 pounds. And I was like, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> I've been doing that. <laughs> and my doctor in Connecticut was actually super understanding, even through the little complication we had, um, he had been really supportive of powerlifting throughout pregnancy which i know is super hard to find um so that was just a crappy experience coming here and, and being told like you know you can't I was like, i'm not gonna bring up I'm, I'm not gonna bring up some of my old sheets because i'll probably fuck up the video drastically but i know like again cookie um had gave birth a few weeks ago and probably about 12 15 weeks ago um she texted me that she had just had her doctor's appointment and the doctor told her the same thing nothing it was like eight pounds and i was oh, like yeah. a gallon of milk is eight pounds go fuck your i said don't tell your doctor to go fuck themselves and what she if laughed. you have another child at home right and i was and i told her i said listen it comes at the end of the day like the doctor's giving you your their opinion which they are clearly more certified than i am in this i said i'm giving you my opinion but when it comes down to it it's your decision and Cookie mm -hmm. was like, let's keep going. And she trained up and like up until the like two days before. She was deadlifting, she was squatting, she was benching. Again, they were all modified. Mm -hmm. Um, she wasn't squatting to depth, she was pulling from blocks, she was incline benching, she and she was doing her accessory work, but she did all that stuff up until like two days out. And the doctor was like, No, you can't lift more than eight pounds. Like, that's a gallon of milk. Yeah. So like you're like, don't you can't go shopping, you can't go food shopping because you'll you'll die. Like you can't do that. So that, that's what's crazy. And like Brian mentioned, the girls going through. Like I, I'm trying to look over here because I have that certification for their um, pregnancy coaches, and I'm. It's really the probably the only real information out there, um, and it's it's good. But at the same time, it's also like be smart and be careful and like you know adjust volume and intensity accordingly it's not anything like groundbreaking because again it's so in it's so different per person that like 
maybe you can lift heavy the whole time, or maybe like you do have complications, or maybe like at the end you have to go more, you have to go to bed rest because it's that bad. Like <clears throat> there's all these different things that we can, we can have kind of have a plan, mm-hmm. but like that plan, like, I mean, I think about like for even just for poverty meets, we have a plan, but that plan changes fairly regularly. But like when you're pregnant, that plan just gets fucked like very yes. quickly. And then it just like, and then we just go new plan, whatever it's fine. Um, so that one's tough. Yeah. Cause like several of the women I coached, their doctors were like, Nope, don't do that. Like, if you're going to do that, it's going to be bad. And they were like, mm, I'm going to do that. And I'm like, I get, I get both sides. Like, at least you've been warned. The doctor has given you their, you know, be safe. This could be bad talk and that's fine. And then, and then I think most trainers have to maybe not be as dumb as I am and be like, no, you should fucking squat a max. Um, but like, <laughs> it's up to you. If you had said to me, I don't want to do a barbell for the next 40 weeks, then we wouldn't, wouldn't have done a barbell. We would have done something else. We still would have trained, but mm-hmm. like, it's, it's so much up to you at that point. Cause like, what are you comfortable? Like you said, the anxiety, like, what are you comfortable doing? Are you comfortable when you're 30 pounds more than you're, than you were before? And it's all in one spot to so your center of gravity is so much different. Are you okay putting a bar on your back and squatting? And if you're not like, that's fine. We'll do something else. Yeah. Goblet squat. I mean, you're already doing a goblet squat with your belly. So like, it's, you know, right. um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the big one is like, I, there's too much negative information. Yeah. Of like, Oh, can't, you can't do that. Like, but then like I said, I think it goes too far with the, the people that are like, well, look what you can do. And, and like you mentioned Meg Scanlon and like, she's, like I'm not that she's going to hear this, but she's not a real person. She had mm-hmm. twins and then like went to worlds within like a year. Like that's wild. She bounced back faster than anyone I've seen. Yeah. It's interesting talking about someone like her. Um, and you use the term bounce back. Like, I think I want to be careful with that because I feel like most women should realize like you're never bouncing back like that body is gone oh yeah yeah you know I'm never gonna be that person and lifting still feels different today two years after um so even with her like sometimes I look at her stuff and I'm like what what is this I just I don't even know and she had a c-section I think so I can't relate um I just I had to unfollow a lot of people like that and kind of try to stay in my own lane because the comparison game is just such a trap, you know? Um, Yeah. And we've talked about that with, with not just lifting in general. Yeah. I said, and and like, and you're, you're an interesting case where like, like you said, you qualified for Nats within 10 months. What'd you place at Nats? Like 14th last year? 13th. 13th. So you were 13th at Nats last year. They upped the totals a shit ton. Yes. And like, and and no, and you're going to hit it again. You're going to qualify for next year with these new monster numbers that like, you know, they cut the classes down so big, which is, I, that's a whole different thing. I think it's great. But like, to be able to hit those numbers is so hard to begin with. And then you're going to hit mm-hmm. that new, that new big qualifying total with a two-year-old. Like that's, so you're saying like, you know, it's weird because not watching someone like Meg Scanlon because of how quickly she adapted and came back and did all these things. Yeah. But like you're one of those people too. <laughs> like, I, yeah. You know, and like, <sighs> and not in the same way. I get it. But no. like, but like, you know, like I said, you're deadlifting PRs right now. Like there's a lot yeah. of women that five years after are not deadlifting PRs. And like you said, like they, you kind of have to understand, like it, it's, you now have like, it's like body version 2.0 and it's not necessarily a better version. It's a, it's a beat up version that is now doing different things. Yes. It's not like, it's not better or worse. It's just different. And like, I think that's hard to understand of like, when you're like, man, I used to deadlift like 350 and now I'm only deadlifting. I can't get above like 315. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's sick. That's still 90%. That's awesome. But they're like, yeah, but I used to do 350. I'm like, yeah, you used to not have a baby. Like, yeah, it's so different, and I think that's like you said. The comparison is it gets super hard. 
Yeah. And there's other factors too, that we haven't even talked about like breastfeeding, uh, for a long Dive time afterward. Go for it. Yeah. I have well, no I mean, idea how many women listen to this, but go for uh, it. <laughs> Hopefully I mean, this podcast however gets much us you want. <laughs> well, we're trying to know. get this demographic right now. Talk about everything, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I breastfed for a very long time after having him and that I don't know how much that affected me, obviously, because I can't compare to what it would have been like without that. But I will say it doesn't feel like your body is fully yours. I mean, you're still giving up part of your body like every day, feeling like not only are is someone physically dependent on you to survive, like, you know, just around the house, but like he also needs your freaking body to survive like that's a that's a crazy feeling <laughs> like, yeah like you're literally like without literally without you it's like oh shit things are gonna go yes wrong. and so uh, mentally like training was like the only like okay this is for me no one else can touch this this is mine <laughs> you know um but, but I even mean, then i'm sure i'm sure there was times especially when he was younger probably well i don't know he's two that might be it might be just as rough now but I'm sure there's times where you've been squatting and you could probably hear him. Cause I know you train at oh, home. Like, like and yes. you probably hear him crying and you're like, fuck, like you want that time for you. Yeah. But also you're like, I, I gotta, I gotta go take care of him. Oh, there were countless times. Andrew was joking about this saying, Oh, you have to tell this to them on the podcast. And I'm like, okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I would be in the middle of like deadlift sets and the camera would go off and I'd be like, Oh, Okay. Then I would run back in, lay down with him, put him back to sleep. 30 minutes later, I would go back in the gym and hit that next set and be like, okay, get your mind right. So yeah, there was a lot of that, just interruptions uh, constantly. I think before having Oliver, um, I was a really nervous competitor and Andrew and I would always talk about like before competing, Chrissy, control what's in your control. And it's corny, but I would literally say that to myself when I competed, like bodybuilding, weightlifting, powerlifting, nothing, things happen outside of your control at these meets where you're like, it could totally fuck you up mentally, or you could just roll with it. And I think after having Oliver, that meet day mentality changed to an everyday mentality where I literally <laughs> needed to I had to wake up and be like, okay, control what's in your control. And just like, you can get through this training session. And if he interrupts, it's fine. I can finish it. It'll be what it is, you know? So, but talking like that, like, so how was nationals this past nationals different than, and then past meets like before? Cause you were, you were a different, you were way more chill. Yeah. It's funny because if you listened to the live stream, my sister was texting me. I think we were laughing about it at the meet. Um, the announcers were like, here comes Christina, cool, calm, collected. <laughs> I was like, that is not who I am as a person, but thank you for the compliment. Um, yeah, because I walk up to the bar just like stoic, like focused. You can't, I'm not the person that's hyping up and screaming, right. but I think the last time we competed was 2020. Yeah, because we were wearing Probably, masks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then nationals last time was like 2019. Um, I think I was more nervous as a competitor before having mm -hmm. Oliver, even though I feel like now the pressure feels bigger to me, which sounds silly. I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm making my family travel all this way. Ryan's traveling all this way. I need to do well. Um, but I was definitely more nervous before him. I think just because powerlifting was like so much more of my identity that I was like, I, I just, you know, want to do the best I can. I think most people are pretty nervous. And when they miss a lift, you know, I would cry. Um, and then at this nationals, I was like, Ryan, I pushed a fucking baby out. I can lift this. <laughs> so that was the mentality. <laughs> yeah, she literally said that to me. Yes. <laughs> you literally said that for squat and deadlift. You're like, I can, this is easy. I, 
I remember, like, I would literally visual. This is nasty. Sorry. I would visualize being in birth and being like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I freaking did that!" And then be like, "Okay, this is just a barbell. Like, come on." <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I think, like I said, that's good because, like, you know, there's a lot of women that train that may be pregnant now, or like I said, or, or may get pregnant. That like, you have they're kind of there's so little information. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I am, I mean, Brian used expertise. Fuck that. I am not an expert in this. I just happened to coach a bunch. I've had a bunch that have at least trusted me to be like, I'm not going to kill you during this next 40 weeks. Um, <laughs> but it's like, there's just so little. And like, you know, you've got the doctors to tell you, well, if you lift more than six pounds, like the world is going to end. So then they're like, Oh my God. And it's like, but then you, come home after the birth and you've got a nine pound child and you're like, what do, what do I do? And it's like, yeah. and, and then how do you get back into training when you just took 10 months off and now you've, you're, it's like I said, your, your, your mind, everything has changed so much that it's like, well, what do we do? And it's like, I'm trying to get women to be like, no, we can, we can go pretty hard. Like we'll go pretty hard. Like I said, pretty hard might be different. Like, I mean, I mean, I remember writing singles for a lot of you being like, no, we're going to hit a heavy single like a week out from giving birth. Mm-hmm. Um, and like heavy is a relative term. Like I said, I think Kristen hit like 68% of her best ever squat. Like it was like, I think it was a day or two before she gave birth. That's but wild. like, it was like an RP, like RPE wise, it was like a nine or nine and a half. Mm-hmm. But like weight wise, it was like 68%. Like, you know, but it was, she was 40 weeks. And then like literally had gave birth the next day. And, and, I still think, and again, like it's different for everybody, but she gave maybe the fastest birth ever. Like she went, like she started to have contractions and I'm, and they were like in a panic how fast everything was happening. Wow. Um, and I think training helps that. Like mm-hmm. I said, not every time weird shit happens and like maybe that it doesn't help at all. But like, I think being in shape and, and continuing to do these things is, is at least helpful. And I think of like, you know, I'm 41 now, but like my mom was swimming with me the day, I think the day of I was born, I was born at 2 a.m. I think she went swimming on like the end of November and she was swimming that morning. And then that night went into labor and had me, you know, 15 hours after swimming. Like that was her exercise yeah. of the day. And I mean, that was fitness 40, definitely. That was 40 years ago. Yeah. Fitness in general definitely helped me through that process of giving birth. Cause I do remember I was in labor for, I think like 24 hours. And then by the time we were pushing, it was a big struggle because he was kind of stuck just anatomically. Like my pelvis was not working. And my doctor was like, we're going to have to do a C-section if you do not push harder. And I was like, all right, don't tell me I can't do something. (laughs) (laughs) Like, no, we're doing it right here. So, But he was pretty big too, right? I thought he was big, but I don't think. What do you, what do you weigh? Seven and a half pounds. So he really wasn't um, big, but like looking at him, I'm like, damn, those shoulders. <laughs> like how'd that come out of me? Like the first I thing mean, he came out, Andrew and I go, oh my God, his shoulders. I was like, he is jacked. <laughs> I mean, Molly was only 5'13". So she was oh, like, well. yeah, she was tiny. Um, yeah. And we laughed because like, one of our friends was down the hall the night before and, and his um, I grew up with him. His son was born the night before Molly was and his son was like 10, 13. Bless that woman. And we like, we, we <laughs> like, he like came over to see Molly and he's like, she's so small. And I went over to see him. I'm like, don't let him near my kid. Like he's so big. Um, and like, it's, you know, even something like that, like you, like there's just so many. And you don't know. And yeah. You don't know. Like, and at least, I mean, at least like, you know, you're going to the doctor's appointments very regularly at the end. So like, that's kind of the good thing too, is like, if we are training and maybe we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, you're going to pick up on it very quickly. Cause you're going to feel something and you've got a doctor's appointment probably in a week or two. Like at mm-hmm. the end, you're going pretty right. I mean, probably went right every week. Yeah. Like I think every week weeks. at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, at least you kind of can pick stuff up like that. But again, like depending on where you are, like you said, Arkansas might be a little different than Connecticut. Like <laughs> yeah. not probably not everyone's going to the doctor every week, the last six, eight weeks. 
Um, yeah, for sure. So then you got to be even a little bit more careful because who you know you don't if you don't pick up something then it could be worse. Um, so no, I think it's like I just I don't know. I think of like that we can push you as hard as possible as long as we're doing it safely, and mm-hmm. and I just and like I've talked to all the women. It's like you just like you said you have to tell me because I don't know. Like I can get a pretty good idea when when you're when you're not pregnant and I can look at your lift and know like how it's going. But like when you're pregnant, you could do a lift. It could look fine. And you're like, I feel terrible. And like, I can't tell that from the lift because the lift might actually look easy. And I'm like, Oh man, she should go up next time. And you're like, no, I don't like how it feels. I don't, you know, and it's, and that's like that communication is so much bigger. Uh, yeah. And I think most women I've coached, we've been good with that. So, but like, it's like, if you, if you, think you're communicating enough you're probably not you could probably do more you know just 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 tell your coach um because mm-hmm. it's a lot you know it's this is it's a fucking lot <laughs> these two don't know that i mean like i'm a guy so i don't have to worry about it as much they don't even have a kid like, i know oh, you two <laughs> um like and then we just and we said before even like and like even we'll go past that part like when we said right before we started about you know bobby and cookie like getting back to training when you uh, don't sleep ever again, you know, like, yeah, you know, you get back to training, you're like, you used to seven, eight hours a night. And then you're like, man, four hours. I like, I got a lot of sleep last night. I feel good. Like, let's go train. And it's like, yeah. And then the training though is not going to feel the same because you're, you know, you're running on half the energy that you should be running on. Um, so it's, that's, yeah, it's a lot. That's the hardest part. I think, it's not even you know pregnancy training through that or the six weeks after it's like when your husband goes back to work and you are I mean I'm a stay-at-home mom right now so me learning how to parent alone without a support system or a village near me and then also learning how to become a competitive athlete again that was like a lot to balance and struggle with um that's to me it was a lot harder than you know balancing the anxiety of training through pregnancy and all that and I'm sure a lot of women at Gleason struggle with that too like giving birth and then thinking oh my gosh how am I going to get back to what I was doing or compete again that's it's like a mental hurdle yeah, like, and it and it's tough because, like, it, even then, like, it, I I think the goal that you made, like you said, was good when you were like, I just want to compete before he turns one. Yeah, because that you you had a good you had a timeline, which was a long enough to be like a safe and effective timeline, but it was mm-hmm. like a pretty simple goal of like, let me just get on the platform. Yeah, because it's one of those things that the more you think about it, if you don't do it, the longer you go, and all of a sudden it's two, three, five, ten years, and you're like, man, I still haven't done this. And yeah, there's nothing I, like there's nothing to say that you can't do this when like you could have taken 10 years off and when Oliver was like 12 years old and you could be like, hey man, go do your own thing. I'm gonna go train and come back. But like at that point, how do you get mentally, how do you get back into it after a decade? So mm-hmm. like I think that was a like a good idea of like I just want to just want to do a meet. You know, it didn't matter necessarily what the numbers were until we got close and you were like, oh, I'm putting up pretty good numbers. Um but like uh, Jen Mello just competed in December for her first meet um, since uh, giving birth. And same thing. She just like, she just was like happy to be out there. Like, yeah, I mean, she squatted like 90 ish percent of her best. She pulled like 88%. Uh, she benched like around 88%. Um, so like, you know, her numbers weren't what people would expect of her if they knew just her previous numbers. She still, I think she dots like 420. So it's still like she had good numbers, um, but they weren't like her numbers, mm-hmm. but you could see, she just was happy to be doing it. And like, she just, she's like, she didn't even like, she missed, she missed her third. I lied to her. She wanted to pull a number. I said, no, you don't have it. And then I put it in anyway. Um, <laughs> Why would you tell her that? Because like I knew it was going to be really hard. So I wanted her to think that we were going for the lower number. So she would just be like, okay, I've got this. And then I lied. And I mean, her husband was right next to me and he looked at me. I'm like, Oh, I lied to her. Um, and she pulled it, but she ended up getting, I think she got called for hitching and, and she was like upset. And I was like, Oh yeah, by the way, that was the heavier number. She was like, just happy. 
Like she didn't even care that she missed at that point. She was like, "Oh, I pulled it." Like oh, she was wow. just like happy that she was out there because, like, you know, she hadn't competed in a while. Like, so yeah. she didn't care that her numbers were down 11, 12 percent. She was just like happy to be out there. And when the meet was over, she's like, "I want to do March and the, the March meet in three months." And I was like, "Oh, all right." Like, so she's getting ready for the meet in three weeks, like, because she just wanted yeah. to get back out there. I Which actually, is, I think that's like I said, that was a good goal. Yeah, I like miss those days a little bit. You know, I I think most people like when their child kind of grows and it's like a little more independent and they can play with them. Listen, I loved the baby stage. Like, whew, snuggle with me all day. You are the cutest. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I like that stage. And um, I think training for me, although it was like hard and I put expectations on myself, I feel like no one had expectations for me. <laughs> like Ryan, you were like, let's just get strong for this meet. And like, my family was like, oh, you're still doing this? And <laughs> Andrew was like, I'm proud of you. You're working out. So there was, <laughs> there was just like no expectations. It was just like, go have fun, make this time about you. Um, and it was like, just stay healthy. And training was just kind of fun at that point. I was just building every week. Like we were seeing like just linear progression truly because I right. started from like scratch um whereas now he's older and it's dealing with a toddler training is like nuts and then <laughs> now there's the expectation of oh my god I have to hit this absurd number to qualify for nationals 2025 so like the pressure and the expectations feel a little higher. And also no one cares that you're still a quote new mom. People are like, Oh, he's two. You're not new. You got this, you know? Right. Right. Like that whole postpartum, like baby phase, people are like, all right. It's been two weeks. Get over it. Yes. Like, like... that shit goes so quick. People are like, all right, when are you doing this? When are you doing that? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's crazy. And like, and like I said, like that, it's interesting, like, you're going to see, like you said, training with an infant is different than a two-year-old, and it's going to be different than a four-year-old, and different than a six-year-old, and, like, yeah. um, like Brian, we see, like, Tom Lador, like, so Tom's been bringing his daughter into the gym, and mm -hmm. his daughter's seven, eight years old, maybe, like, she's pretty, she, and she's, like, been squatting, benching, and I know it's different because it's Tom, it's not his wife, <coughs> excuse me, but, like, you know, when Oliver gets older, he's going to see you doing this. He might want to do it. He also might not give yeah. a shit because Molly gives zero shits about the gym. <laughs> she comes in with me regularly on Sundays and she does some stuff, but it's it's not about lifting. It's about her like moving around, exercising, having fun. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, you know, she's deadlifted body weight for five. So like she can do these things. She just, it's not like she's like, dad, I want to deadlift. Yeah. Um, but she can, like it's... Um, you know, in a few years, Oliver might be like, mom, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, and then it changes again, because now you're like, now you, now you're going to want, you, you're either going to want to show him how to do it. Or you're going to be like, get out. I got to lift. Um, and it might go different every day. Some days you might be like, come here and lift with me. And other days you might be like, go see dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, and that, and like I said, every day, like it, every, it's just so unpredictable. Every step is different that like, yeah. th there's no there's no playbook for this where like I said, there's so much information out there for just like lifting, mm -hmm. but for lifting as a mom, it's like, who knows? Yeah, that's <laughs> just throw it out. And like, I've read the book and I've, it, you know, I've talked to other people. I've talked to women who've done it. I've talked to coaches and it's just like, it's all kind of this, like, yeah, let's just see how it goes. <laughs> there's not a lot of help. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel like, that is how it's going to be in the future, even though more women are doing it and more people are learning about it. I still don't see there being like, I don't know, much better recommendations that, that like exist right now, because what can we recommend explicitly right. to all women, you know? I right. Mean, and that's the hard part is like, you write this, you like, you know, you put a book out like that and it has to be pretty generalized to like, yeah to cover as much as we can but like we're not going to get the outliers and i know if, like for me to be honest like we've had a couple podcasts where it's like i'm a man i'm i am not the authority here like 
you can gladly tell me to shut the fuck up because like I don't I can listen to you all day, but I have no idea how you're actually feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yes, I'm coaching you, but like, and I have an idea, but I, I really, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going through the same thing. So it's like, for me to be like, Hey women, you should do this. I'm kind of like, shut up to you. Like, I'm not the one, I don't feel like I should be the one to put that out there. I think Mm -hmm. more moms need to do this, which is great. And like, we, like I said, like we've had Kristen on in the past, but that was, I think, pre-pregnancy. Um, this is something we could probably have more moms on and do like a little series with everyone. And we could probably at some point try to do like nine of you, but that'll be fucking wild. Um, <laughs> but like, I, th- I think that's the more important thing is like having women talk about how they've done it more than me saying, this is what we did. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you, it, you know, giving your experience of like, you know, the anxiety of the, of the movements and like, am I going to get back up here? And like, can I do like, and then like, you know, Oh, I did this. I can do this. Like, I think that's more important Mm -hmm. than having a book and a certification or me being like, yeah, you can do that. Or a doctor being like, "Mm, no, you can't do that. Like, I think hearing like, and hearing different sides is like probably going to be more important for most women to be like, Oh, I can at least try this and see. Um, Yeah. And go from there. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, there's not a lot of people in, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, a big population of people like competitive strength athletes who you know, are trained through pregnancy and uh, detail what you're experiencing. So it's kind of, I mean, I think like when we like kind of had you, a few of you guys going through the same thing together talk, um, but like, other than that, there's not, it's probably easier for you to communicate with people going through the same thing rather than like us telling you how to lift or a doctor like scaring you into not lifting uh it's it's there's not a lot of governing body experience that you're probably coming into contact with and if it's on social media it might be wild so uh, yeah. but not but not even strength athletes like if you look at high level female athletes yeah like if you look at like mm-hmm. WNBA athletes like not many of them are having kids and then playing after like yeah. if they have kids, it's usually like the end of their career, the career's over and they kind of like settle down and they, and then now it's a new life. There's not, or like you, you, I, I have a couple names in my head that I'm thinking of, but I don't want to say the wrong ones and sound like a dumb guy. So I'm just going to be general. Um, but like you see a few women that have done like that have had a baby and came back and played at a high level or ran track at a super high level. And it's really rare. Like it's yeah. really rare to see these people come back and, or if they do come back, they're not, it's even rarer to come back to a level that they were as good as they were before because it's so different. So I think that's the other problem is like, obviously as a guy, this is so much easier. Like, you know, you see NBA athletes that, you know, they have 47 kids as a father. It didn't affect their game. Um, <laughs> but I think it got better, which was cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, some people like, you know, um, but uh like you don't there's just not that much out there for women like i said you i think wmba is like what jumps out to me but like you know how many of those great players had a kid and came back and played period and then how many of those that did that came back and played as well as they did before it's a really small number and i think that breaks my heart um you know andrew and i were just watching that netflix show break point about the tennis players yeah oh yeah yeah. Um, and they one of them was saying the same thing she was like I want to start a family but that's probably the end of my career right and I don't think powerlifting is my career by any means but it's such a big part of me and I'm not willing to give it up um and it breaks my heart to think like oh my gosh the longer I wait if we did have a second child would that make coming back impossible because now these numbers are just like insanity right you know like 480 for my weight class the fuck i mean when i hit that that'll be like (laughs) the best i've ever done right Um, and it took so long to get here so it just feels like do i want to like start over and feel like okay and now i'm just gonna lift for fun after that or how far am I going to take this kind of thing? Right. And it's tough. Cause like you said, like it, it's, you don't lose that competitive drive. No. 
but but now like you said you're kind of starting from scratch like even though you trained all the way through but like after you actually after the delivery and usually about six weeks of just recovering Mm -hmm. you know you get back in the gym and you're like whoa i can't brace like my core is gone yeah like now we're like let's do planks and side planks for a long time until you remember how to like actually feel that and to be able to get like i said get back like if you know if if you were to do this now like you're and and we talked about like for your next meet i was thinking that you were going to be like 475 ish as a total and then it's like well fuck it let's just go for 480 because like that's the goal that's the new number so let's you know let's shoot for 480 but like if you had a kid now 480 might take a long time to get back to and i'm older yeah and Um, then like so it's there's a whole like it it, and it's and like i think of someone like april like you know april's got five kids um and april's a little uh, around my age but like she started later so like you can do these things and april's you know she's won the masters national championship so it's like she's obviously a a great lifter but it, it was on a different time frame yeah um and that and so you can see that it's it's possible like it and and it like I mean it's very different in her regard because I think like her youngest kid is like 17 um Mm. so it's well after the fact but like she's still got to deal with the fact that she's got five kids so she's still a mom the whole time and it still has to change the way you know it's different than if she had zero and I'm not saying that like it's easy for other people but it's different like yeah it's probably easier but like I'm not trying to put them down but it's it's different like it, it's mm-hmm. so you can't have the same like you said the for the first thing you can't have the same expectations because who knows yeah totally I think it's really interesting how there's this expectation of like coming back after you're pregnant I mean like once again speaking from just like stories and stuff like that but coming back after pregnancy of like oh I have this expectation of, like oh I just need to be like what I used to be not like just you like literally went through probably one of the most traumatic things anyone would ever go through like you literally that's like saying oh man why am I not as good as a runner when I have half my leg cut off it's like well you just went through something guy like relax right like giving birth isn't easy and that's why I think it's you know we have to you know any movement after giving birth is like you're nailing it you're doing a real good job because it's not an easy thing to go through (laughs) yeah I didn't even realize like the physical trauma of it until we got home and I wanted to walk our dog and I couldn't (laughs) I was like what the heck like doing it was like the hardest workout of my life and then I, I just kind of thought like, oh, I'll recover like a workout. <laughs> I don't know. But then you come home and I, like daily activities are hard and you realize, wow, what a physical trauma you just went through. It's crazy. Yeah. And as I said, if you think about like, if I look back at your program or everyone else is like, once you got back into it, it was like a lot of really low level core exercises mm-hmm. to like learn how to use your core again. Especially like if you have the, you know, if you had diastasis recti where like you just got, I mean, you're getting fucking pulled apart, like yeah. <clears throat> getting your core to do what you want it to do is so wild. And like, especially with power thing, like, oh, well, you want to put 400 pounds in your back and your core is being a jackass. Um, <laughs> and like, is a dead bug going to carry over to the 400 pounds? No, but like you need to like relearn how to use those muscles and, you know, an exercise for you that would normally be like, super simple you're like oh this is kind of hard yeah and like get and getting back to and like i think that's like you can't and that's the weird thing about post-pregnancy is like you can't rush it we have to let it kind of happen naturally because like it will come back i think fairly well but Mm -hmm. like you really can't rush it and i had a little bit of like the i had some experience with some women that had some surgeries not pregnancy related but core surgeries that when we we got back a little bit quicker than we you know it's not as damaging as as giving birth but they still had a surgery through that and they ran into low back issues right away mm. and like so then the first pregnant woman i trained i was like it's gonna be worse than that so like i took i took a little bit longer and we still had some like really like low back pinchy kind of pain 
And then, like, after that, I was like, we slowed it down even more. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll get there. But, like, let's do the bar. You know, three sets of five with the bar. Um, yeah. And you're like, man, this is 10% of what I can do. But it's like, it's fine. Like, because like I said, you, it, the next day you're like, whoa, that was rough. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So. Um, so I, just talking back to like the, uh, you know, feeling like the things that, you know, lifting was for you and, and your time and it was your thing. I, mean, I think that um, training in general, let alone like training for a competition in a uh, solo sport is pretty much like a selfish pursuit if you look at it. I mean, uh, do you feel like you, yeah. your perspective is different now? I mean, you, you barely have, you know, you talked about having barely enough time in your life where it's just about you. I mean, it's not, you're not the priority right now. Do you feel like uh, your perspective is more in check now? Do you think it's, it's changed uh, a bunch just in how you see that time and what you do or? Yeah. I think before I would spend, you know, three, four hours at Gleason's, just like shooting the shit, having a good time. And I miss that. I miss the social aspect. Like I'm kind of a weird power lifter. I'm isolated all the time. <laughs> I train alone. Um, but now I see it as like, if I can't take care of myself, then I can't take care of my son. Um, and I think it was like a hard balance because I didn't want to take time away from being with him and to do it. So I always tried to do it like when he was napping or for nationals. I mean, I was waking up at 4 a.m. every day to make sure I got it done before he even like got up. And that was batshit crazy and I don't recommend it. But so I think now that, like I told you guys earlier, he's in a short school program. So it gives me that time to do it I don't feel guilty um I think in the beginning I did I didn't want to like miss milestones or anything like anything. that yeah you don't want to miss like did they sneeze oh my gosh <laughs> did you get a video of it like <laughs> it was like every you know second but it has changed to like the days where I couldn't finish my training early on or like the days where Andrew's like, oh, I, I can't watch him during this. Like, I, I really need you to do it. And I couldn't get my training done. Like I was a cranky bitch the rest of the day where I'd be like, oh, I did nothing for myself, nothing for myself today. Like I didn't shower. I didn't train. What's the point? So I think we as a family have prioritized like, okay, mom's training now. So this is for her. <laughs> but it's weird because like you said, like the selfish aspect, like it I get it. Like the it's a it's a fairly it is a selfish sport to be able to compete at this level because you need so much of your time. Mm -hmm. But like when you're a parent, it's different because being selfish in this regard is making you a better parent for Oliver too. Yeah. Because like if you just were like if it was and I and it's I get it too, because like I again I, I as a father it's not the same, but like I always, I agree, like, the priority is so much about Molly that, like, I often forget about myself. And, like, I have to remember that, like, me taking care of myself is the fucking priority for Molly. Yes. Because, like, if I'm not healthy, then I can't do anything for her anyway. And, like, mine's different than, like, your guys now, but, like, I think, like, my diabetes, like, I was... I've been diabetic for 30 years and I let it get a little, I was lazy for a while because that's just how people kind of get with it. And I was like, I have to be better for Molly. So like I went back on the pump and went back on the CGM and like my, and I got way healthier because like I was taking better care of myself. And I said, like, I actually at one point like apologized to Jill and Molly because I was like, I was being a shitty husband and father because like, I was doing everything I could for them, but like at the same time, I wasn't taking care of myself. So like, I realized how little energy I had and how just like crappy I felt because I wasn't taking care of my diabetes. And now that I'm doing better, I'm like, Oh man, I was a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's weird because like the selfish thing that you need for you for training is weirdly unselfish at the same time. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's it sounds selfish. And I know what you're saying, Brian, like it, like in the moment you're like, this is my time. 
but your time makes you a better parent for him. And it's a good example for him too. So like for the future, like he'll see that and it's, and in that regard, it's like the least selfish thing you can do because you're doing it like, yes, you're doing it for you, but you're, you're doing it for him too. And that's the, like, that's the weird, like dichotomy of a parent. Like this is my time, but it makes me so much better for you. So it's people like, Oh, you're, you know, you're not spending time with your kid. Go fuck yourself. Like it makes me a better parent when I am with my kid. Yeah. So it's weird. It's it's like I said, I don't, it, it, it's hard to describe. Like, I don't really know if I'm saying it in a way that makes a lot of sense. No. And I, like, Andrew and I have had so many talks about it too. Cause I have felt a lot of guilt and I think I've had like family members or friends kind of make like little quips, like, don't you miss Oliver? Or I don't know, just little things that I'm like, eh, what did you mean by that? But um I think if Andrew was competing, I don't know if anyone would ask him that. Right, right. You know? Yeah. It's I think it's more of that on you than I mean that's might be go back to the idea of like there's no there's no one talking about a lot of these subjects from your yeah. perspective. And it might people might see it like from a male perspective, professional athlete, or just anyone in general, but I don't think there's a lot of people talking from your perspective and you know that's some generally just curiosity but like yeah what's your reference point Mm -hmm. yeah and it's like i i said you know before like with with cookie and bobby being new parents i'm like jill and i are pretty open about like any parents ask us questions we we tell our honest stories of of like what we've done with molly and sometimes people are like whoa that's aggressive and it's like (laughs) well this is the shit that happened and like, yeah. and then, and then you become a parent and you, and like, you very quickly understand, you're like, oh yeah, you're right. Like I do, I get that. But like, when you're not a parent, it's hard to understand because you're like, it's like, well, I've slept three hours in the last two days. So I'm a little fucking cranky and you're trying <laughs> to like take care of yourself while take care of them. And like, then they cry and you're like, oh my God. Um, and that's coming from the father's side. where like, I said, like, I'm, no one's picking on me for that. Um. Yeah, like you said, if Andrew was doing this, no one would be like, no, oh, why aren't you home with Oliver? They'd be like, you know, that's cool. For you, it's like, why aren't you home with Oliver? It's more like, it's more <laughs> yeah. judgy. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like it's, it that selfishness to me is, it's also at the same time, like the least selfish thing because you're making yourself better for him. Um, mm-hmm. Both mentally and physically. Because if you didn't do this, you might want to murder someone. Like Andrew. Literally. Yes. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't hear that. Yeah. Sorry, bud. <laughs> um I don't know. Usually I like I always say like I feel like there's like a, a time. I mean we've been doing we've been talking for a while. I think I feel like we're kinda we're kinda there right now. We could probably do mm-hmm. more another time, but there's like that kind of weird cutoff. Um I don't know. You got anything you want to say right now? You don't post shit. So like the normal thing of like science, like, you know, tell us where we can find you. You post once a year. So like, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> you're not you know, that regard. Yeah. No one, don't worry about where we can find you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you post like one picture of Oliver and one lifting post a year. And that's about it. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like I, I'm, fine. I'm always like I don't training. Po- my thinking, personal like, page, I don't, I don't post care shit. about my training, you know? Right? And then I guess maybe some people would care, but I don't know. I care. Maybe, maybe I should maybe, post training. Oh, thank maybe, you. Maybe you could <laughs> post it now and be like, you know, for other moms that are trying to do it. Now I just put That's... work on your part on your plate. Yeah, but, that, yeah. I was gonna say that, but I'm like, I don't want to add more to your plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Andrew says that to me all the time. He's like, you should post your training and talk about, you know, how hard it is. And I'm like, oh, so be like vulnerable on social media <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, and, like, and that's you're right and you, like maybe you don't have to go that far but even just like i don't i don't i mean it's up to you like i said i don't post anything on my personal page i have one i haven't posted in like six years so i'm, I'm i mean you're you're two posts you're way ahead of me yeah um, so it's fine um also i, I wear any... like the same sweatpants every day so it's like oh my gosh are they gonna judge me for wearing the same shit every single day <laughs> this is my sunday shirt 
Yeah, that's this what I'm my saying. <laughs> because because my Monday through Friday shirt is my GPT gear, so I'm I oh, like so you even though <laughs> even this is the GPT podcast and I've got GPT in the background, I'm still not wearing it because this is my Sunday shirt. Because I wear GPT shit, I actually don't have GPT pants on right now. So let's see, I'm whoa, full, not GPT right now. <laughs> wow, look at you! It's a Sunday. It's it's the day of rest. Even though <laughs> even though we're working right now, and I programmed before we got on the call. Um, I don't know. Well, anything, anything you want to say else after an hour of talking? Oof. I mean, I feel like we beat this point down a lot, but you know, to anyone pregnant or coming back from having a baby. And I would say like, stay in your own lane and not compare yourself to, to other moms coming back and focus on your own progression. I think that was what I literally had to just mute and hide anyone who lifted and ever had a child (laughs) on social media to make myself like stay true to that mantra or else I would have doom scrolled for days. So I think that's always important yeah. for all lifters, I, actually. Right. And that's, I say, that's not negative to them. That's just what you needed for, for you. Like it's, it's not their fault. It just, that's no, that's no. How comparison is what everyone does. So it's, it is what it is. But like I said, yes. I, I'm, you know, making that joke before, like you did qualify for Nats and you did place 13th and <laughs> You're gonna qual and you're going again this year. You're going to Salt Lake. Yes. And then you're gonna fucking qualify again for next year with those crazy numbers. So like you're that person that they're muting if if you post. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I would also say that that is part of like my success is being able to focus on myself and truly mute out. Even before Oliver, I would say like literally before any meet, I was like, I cannot look at other people lifting right now. Um, at nationals, there was a girl on our warm up platform that fell during a deadlift, a warm up. Oh my God. I literally closed my eyes and turned around and said, Delete that from your brain because <laughs> you are going to now go out there and somehow fall because you just watched this girl fall. Like, that's who I am. <laughs> like, I just need to keep my head down, eyes forward, and not look at anything else to really focus. And I think that that is part of why I have the numbers I have. So might not work for other people, but. <laughs> exactly. You heard it here first, <laughs> first folks. Achieve your dreams. Look out Achieve for Ryan's new book called Why You Should Train While Pregnant. Oh, God. <laughs>